Hi everyone, so I want to start with a question to you guys right away. Um, so in our team, we often have discussions about how a new feature should look like, and this is an example from our app. So there we have so-called challenges, uh, which are tasks that you have to complete while you play our game. And in variant A, uh, you would get a new challenge um, 24 hours after completing the previous one, and in variant B, you would get three new challenges each day. So what do you guys think? Which variant performed better? I can give you a few seconds to think about it. Maybe you don't take a guess because you already know from my team. <laughs> so who thinks variant A performed better? Mm -hmm. Okay, and who thinks variant B performed better? Okay, so just like you guys, we had mixed opinions in our team. So that's why at that point we decided to do an A-B test. And just to give you a little bit of context, I'm a developer at Lotum where we create casual mobile games. And I've been working with Flutter for two years now. And this example is from our app for Pix One Word. Maybe you already heard of it. So we at Lotum believe that the success of our app is determined by our users. So we don't have clients that um, we for whom we develop apps, but we have quite a large user base that plays our games, games daily. Um, so every day we try to improve our games and make them more user-friendly and that's why a b testing is a fundamental part of our development process and now we will see why you should also consider using a b tests in your flutter apps and of course how to do that so first of all what is a b testing does it work okay uh, a b testing is basically to compare two versions of something to see which one performed better so the variations A and B are presented randomly to users. So half will see the first version, the other half will see the other version. And in the end, we do a statistical analysis to see which version performed better um, according to predefined indicators. So what are the benefits of all that? The most obvious one is that we want to improve our product. Not as obvious, but also really important is that we want to lower risks. So in an app with many users, even small changes can impact the whole user base. Um, so it's also helpful to see if a change does not impact the performance of the app. And also, A-B tests show really fast results, so we can make relatively quick decisions and continue to develop our app further. So how does this work in general? First, you brainstorm about what you want to change or improve in your app, or you already have an idea about that, and then you create two or more different variants of the feature you run, run the A-B test, you analyze the results, and in the end, you apply the winning version for all of your users. So if you want to implement this locally, it's quite simple. You just define different variants, like the challenge variants that we saw before, and then you randomly assign the, a variant to a user, but you also uh, want to make sure um, that the user stays in the same test group during the whole period your test is running, so you would add a user seat for that, and um, yes, that's basically it for the local test. A bit more powerful and flexible is implementing tests remotely. For example, with the Firebase remote config. So first of all, what is the remote config? The remote config is a cloud service that allows you to change the behavior of your app without an app update. So first you create in-app uh, values in your app, default values, uh, then you override these values either for all of your users or for a group of your users. And in the end, you can control in your app when these updates are applied. So let's take a look at when you should use local tests and when you should use remote tests. So if you want to test the beha behavior right after app start, it's probably best to use a remote uh, local test, sorry. Um, for example, we tested different versions of our consent dialog in our, in our app. And because it appears directly after the app start, there might not be enough time to fetch new remote config values, or you simply don't want to wait for that long. Um, also, you can use local tests if uh, the rollout of a feature is not time critical. But in most other cases, it might be better to use remote tests because there you can make quick changes. Also, if there are potential problems with one of the variants, it's helpful to have a remote test, or if you don't have a fast release cycle. And additionally, Firebase also allows you to easily evaluate your tests directly in the console, so that's also an advantage of that. So let's take a look at how A-B tests work with the remote config. Well, first you would have to add Firebase to your app, initialize it, add the plugins, and set up the remote config in your app. But I'm not going to go into detail into that because there's a really good description of that on the Firebase documentation. 
But after all that, you can just get an instance of the Firebase remote config, fetch it, activate it, and then you can access the remote config parameters that you defined in your Firebase console before. So in your console, you can also create EIB tests. You can add a name and a description, a target users, and uh, an, op an optional activation event. So that means that the EIB test is only applied to users after that event. And then you can add some metrics that determine the better version. So there are some predefined metrics like crash free users, revenue, or retention. But you can also add your own metrics. And in the end, you can configure the variance and their weighting. But to evaluate which variant performed better, you might also want to add your own relevant analytics event. So for the example from before, it might be helpful to have an event when the, when the user completes a level or completes a challenge. So you can easily see which group of the users played more levels or completed more challenges. So if you want to run A-B tests frequently or define different A-B tests at the same time, it might be helpful to implement the whole thing a bit more in a structured way. So for example, we implemented an experiment config uh, with different adapters. So there's a local adapter for local tests and a Firebase adapter for remote tests. And there could also be more adapters, of course. And in this config, we also define the individual A-B tests um, or experiments, as we call them. And there can be experiments with different types, depending on what kind of A-B test it is. And so in our code, we would uh, define a config uh, with some local experiments and some remote experiments. And then we would pass the different adapters in the, of the config directly in the constructor and initialize the different experiments directly with the respective adapter. So after initializing the config, uh, you can easily oops, access the values of the experiments. And because we thought this implementation might be helpful also for other developers, we, uh, like you, we published it as a package, or as two package, actually, um, a few days ago. So if you're interested in A-B testing, you can go and check it out. And last but not least, I want to share some best practices that we learned over the years. The first one is that in order to be able to test the different variants, it's really helpful to offer the possibility of editing test values in the debug app. So we have implemented that as a um, debug menu, where you can change different settings, and then in the release app, uh, in the release version of the app, it's not visible. Um, secondly, to ensure that the tests do not influence each other, it's best to test only one feature at a time. Like that, you can make sure that the um, outcome of the test is really a result of your experiments that you're testing. And last but not least, the smaller the difference between the variants, the larger the user base needs to be in order to still deliver a significant result. So you should also keep that in mind. And now back to my initial question, which variant performed better? So we compared different metrics of both variants, like retention, coin spends, or revenue. And in most metrics, the variants performed roughly the same. But in terms of level played, the variant B performed about 7% better. So that's why you can find that version now in our app. And yeah, that was it already. Uh, thank you very much. So I hope you got some helpful insights into A-B testing. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to talk to you later. Um, or you can also see my contact info on that slide. Thank you.